There are plenty of good horror video games out there that do a great job of putting the fear of God in you. However, sometimes the scariest games are the ones that aren't actually billed as horror titles. Maybe it's because you're more prepared to be shocked in those already on the defensive and with a clean pair of underpants at the ready, whereas in these unassuming titles you're caught well and truly off guard by an unintentionally terrifying moment. In many cases this might be down to the dated graphics making everything already look a little surreal, but other times you might get the feeling that the devs were trying to make something normal and the lynching part of their brain simply took over and morphed it into something human eyes should never be subjected to. I'm Josh from WhatCulture.com and these are 10 unintentionally terrifying video game moments. Number 10, Jaws 2 Banjo-Kazooie for the majority of its runtime, Banjo-Kazooie is that great Nintendo platformer you fondly remember from your childhood. What you might have repressed though is the way it occasionally pitted you against some of the most terrifying sharks this side of Bruce from Finding Nemo. First up is Snacker, who is essentially just your standard great white. This guy, with his ridiculously menacing eyebrows, chases you as soon as you jump into the water. It's never played out loud, but this entire level is soundtracked by the Jaws theme song on repeat in the back of your mind. Big up if you got that reference. In the words of the immortal Qui-Gon Jinn though, there's always a bigger fish, and the second shark clanker makes Snacker look like lunch. This fella is an absolute unit and made out of metal, which as the Discovery Channel has taught me, is not what sharks are generally made out of. Not only is he ferocious in his pursuit of the player, but he has these wide emotionless eyes that stare straight through you and into another dimension. Those eyes and those teeth, ugh, I still see them behind my eyelids. Number 9. All the Bosses Cuphead in one sense, Cuphead is incredibly lovable. Its cartoon art style, imaginative characters, and charming heroes all scream the kind of kid-friendly comfort that you move away from as you grow older. However, all of that is warped through the distinctly strange aesthetics of the 1930s cartoon style. It's not only this game, but the shows that inspired it. There's just something not quite right about the way these designs, animations, and music all mesh together. It's the way the enemies move, and their mad eyes especially, that are just freaky to see in motion. As a result, even the silliest of bosses like the vegetables early on in the game take on an eerie unnatural quality that makes them oh so scary. It might seem ridiculous to be terrified by a carrot, but that's what makes it hurt so much. Number 8. Most Haunted. Regrets. Ah, where to even begin with the Rugrats PS1 game? The whole release uncannily looks like a cartoon version of a Razorhead, for one, with the choppy characters and sparse environments creating this terrifying hellscape for the player. I'm not even kidding with that comparison either, it stressed me right out, I mean just look at the parallels. This isn't just me right, I'm not just losing my mind to Rugrats PS1 like a madman. The smooth edges of the original show have given way to these choppy, angular representations of once lovable characters that would absolutely eat a baby if given the chance. The whole thing already has an eerie vibe to it, so when you cast as Tommy and told to make your way around an empty house at night while goddamn ghosts roam the hallways, you might as well have been playing a straight up horror game. It still retains its unnerving atmosphere now as the dated graphics look even more alien than they did at the time. Number 7. Crash's Gruesome Deaths – Crash Bandicoot 2 Crash Bandicoot is a scamp, isn't he? Across Naughty Dog's original trilogy, players controlled the Bandicoot as he jumped, span, and ate Wampa Fruit across colourful levels, all soundtracked to some of the grooviest music on the PS1. But all that made it so jarring then, when Crash would get brutally murdered by enemies over and over and over again. While there was nothing special about the deaths in the first title, the following two upped the ante massively with unique death animations, as Crash's spirit would literally leave his body and fly towards heaven every time he died. That was pushing the boat out enough, but the real scarring material came when you'd get killed by specific creatures. Take the bees, for instance. It wasn't only tense to be chased across a level by these things, but when they actually did catch and sting you, you'd have to watch as Crash grotesquely swelled up before he died. If you didn't see this as a kid and then instantly develop a fear of bees for the rest of your life, well, you're a stronger person than I am. Number 6. The Night Levels, Rayman now the night levels in Rayman are spooky for the same reason Cuphead is. 
On the surface, the designs of the environment and the characters are wholesome and innocent. You've got music notes, clouds, bongos, and a whole bunch of other music-related iconography. Of course, it's how these innocent concepts are twisted and made slightly off that makes the whole affair transform into something terrifying. The night already has a mystical quality to it, and combined with the alternate soundtrack that swaps music out for the ominous thumping of thunder and punishing animated musical instruments that can shoot lightning at the player, it makes for a strangely atmospheric time. Again, it's that creeping unnaturalness that's the most off-putting, and what makes the original Rayman still quite unnerving to play now. Number 5. The Vampires Enter the Matrix It didn't review well, but Enter the Matrix was goddamn awesome. The movie franchise is perfectly suited to a video game translation, and this canonical continuation perfectly realised the core staples of slow-mo combat, intense gunfights, and kicking the crap out of vampires with wooden sticks. Wait, what? Well, yeah, you might currently be questioning the last part of that statement, but a whole level in the game had you battling against these supernatural creatures in a gothic mansion. As mentioned, this is an official tie-in approved by the Wachowskis, but it's never really explained why there's suddenly these creatures of the night lurking about. The in-universe explanation found in the second movie states that they're leftovers from an older version of the Matrix program, but their sudden inclusion in Enter the Matrix is startling to say the least. It's mostly unnerving because the game barely draws attention to them. They're treated as any other enemy, and if you didn't know the explanation beforehand, the spooky questions they raise stay with you for the rest of the game. Number 4. Dodging the Prefix, Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets in a way, literally every single part of both Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone and Chamber of Secrets games could have made it onto this list. If I had my way, each one of them would have been rated 18 and banned in every single country, as the whimsical magical setting of Hogwarts is warped through the limitations of a PS2 movie tie-in production. It's the second title that's the spookiest though easily, without a goddamn doubt. The film it's based on is already terrifying, with an unseen giant snake slithering around through the halls of the school, petrifying students and whispering into Harry's thoughts. It's none of that mystical stuff which makes Chambers' game tie-in so scary though, but rather regular old high school prefix. There's one rather lengthy sequence in the title where you control Harry as he sneaks around Hogwarts at night, avoiding his older classmates who are patrolling the halls. There's just something so uniquely tense about being that age in a school setting no less and being somewhere you shouldn't be. The nighttime setting exacerbates those paranoid thoughts and it doesn't help ease the nerves that you could theoretically run into a giant snake if you turned the wrong corner. But it's the sheer act of getting caught being somewhere you're not supposed to be that puts the chills straight up the spine. Also, prefects are well and truly model enemies of the crack, which, you know, doesn't help. Number 3. Elevator Soldiers – Metal Gear Solid Even though it's a stealth action game, the horror genre is all over the original Metal Gear Solid. From the hellish brutality of Grey Fox to Psycho Mantis directly addressing the player, there are so many spooky moments in that original game, but they're all intentional. One which isn't played as straight horror though is the elevator ambush. This sequence sees you activate a lift only to get a call from Otacon. He informs you he built five stealth camouflage prototypes and that four are missing. He also says that the elevator you're on is over the weight limit, which doesn't make sense because Snake is the only one there. I think you know where this might be going. The music gets tense and Otacon suddenly tells you to look out because the guys who stole the tech are in there with you. Suddenly, four soldiers appear and an action scene begins. It's a short, deadly surprise and it puts you on the edge of your seat for a good hour afterwards. Number 2. Monster Rock – Spider-Man For the most part, the PS1 Spider-Man game is a vehicle for a whole load of wacky banter. It's set in a colourful version of New York and even teams Spidey up with Venom, whose symbiote must be primarily made by 90s cheese rather than alien goop, because half of the character's dialogue is made up of one-liners and the word dude. What I'm saying is that it's a very kid-friendly introduction to the comics universe, with the exception of the final boss. The main antagonists of the story are Doc Ock and Carnage, and the final level sees the two entities merge into Monster Ock, a hulking symbiote with six arms that chases Spidey and the player through an exploding lab. It might not look like much now, but this thing was a crime against nature back in the day, primarily because of just how alien the concept was. 
This thing is unholy and should be exercised from the pits of gaming history. Number one, the creepy butler, Tomb Raider 2. Ah, oh, this guy, this guy can absolutely go to hell and then the hell inside hell and then just like straight into my ass because that's worse than hell's hell. Sorry, you didn't need that visual, but I'm trying to make a point. Part of me is tempted to just leave this entry right there, but I probably should explain why this guy is so creepy. Tomb Raider 2 made the genius move of allowing players to explore Lara's ridiculously glamorous mansion. Away from missions, you could get a feel for the controls, engage in some harmless platforming segments around obstacle courses and in the gym, and just generally get a taste for what Lara herself does in her downtime. It was supposed to be a super fun time, but there was a spectre hanging all over it. A spectre in the form of a black-robed, hunchbacked old man who followed you around with a tray of tea everywhere. This zombie butler constantly appearing behind you was damn horrifying, and there's a reason everyone locked him in the freezer to stop his endless pursuit. This isn't just about him though, this is on Lara as well. This dude can barely even walk, and yet she still has him employed? I mean seriously, this isn't on. What black magic has she spun to entrap this poor man's soul to a life of servitude? The whole thing stinks, and it gives me the creeps, and I don't like it. So that's our list. I want to know what you guys think down in the comments below. Are there any unintentionally terrifying video game moments that I missed off here? And while you're down there, could you give us a like, share, subscribe, and head over to whatculture.com for more lists and news like this every single day. Even if you don't, though, I've been Josh. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you soon.